ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Uh, I know that uh, today I was supposed to release a uh, another drum cover, and I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. Hold on. Uh, this is kind of like a different version of Musicians on Couches, and I just wanted the prop to talk to you because this is a different feature. Hold on. How sweet it is! <laughs> That's a Jackie Gleason thing. I'll probably put the clip in here somewhere. Um, Papa's delicate condition. How sweet um, it is. So I'm calling this Life Lessons from the Drum Mission. This is going to be quick, eight, nine, ten minutes. I will release that drum cover next week. You know, I like to try to be inspired when I do this. I know I've done one almost every week, but not, not every week. I have missed a few weeks. And I, I didn't really know what I was going to do and I, because I, hadn't, I didn't have time to just go over. I was, I was going to do Carnival 9, Emerson, Lake, and Palmer, the first impression. Not, not both parts, just the first part. And the first part's like nine minutes long. And uh, I, was having, I, I was having fun listening to it, but I hadn't really worked it through. And I, I played it when I was a kid. And I mean, truth be told, you know, I've, for, I've forgotten that there's, um, <clears throat> excuse me, that there's, uh, you know, most of it's in 4-4, four, four, but there's like bars of 5 and bars of 3 and 7 and all sorts of things like that. And I didn't want to, I didn't want to sound that bad. So, so you may just, well, Glenn, why didn't you do it first? Why didn't you do it first? Well, here's the thing. Uh, my, part of the thing. Uh, I'm looking at the wheels. I thought something was coming from behind the couch. I'm not high or anything. I'm really not. I, I do that so little. So here's the thing. I had to finish up my driver's education certificate thing because hopefully within the next two or three weeks I'm going to be teaching driver's ed. Uh, and it will be, you know, like another one of my little side gigs. And I got inspired for this as I was doing that because I had to finish it last week and I had to like finish 30 hours of interning. Uh, or the guy from the state who was going to watch me at the end of the week. He was going on vacation, and that would put me back to August to do that. And I told you before, I do Uber part-time to make ends meet sometimes. I don't want to do Uber anymore. Do Uber anymore. It's too hard on my car. Hold on. Listen, this is really good tea. It's lavender, ginger. It's really good. It's kind of nighttime, and I don't want to drink coffee late at night because I'm old, and I'll be up all night. So... That led me to this. <clears throat> no matter what in my life, no matter what successes I've had, and I'm going to post one of them in a minute, no, ma no matter what anything is going on, how much money I was making through teaching or playing or when I was touring with Dick Wagner uh, or anything like that, I always kept something that wasn't music going. I'll say that again. I always kept something that wasn't music going. And unless you're playing for Bruce Springsteen or Eric Clapton or one of these people, this is my life lesson. Do this for yourself. Do this for yourself. Whether it's Uber, I don't think Uber's a good company. Lyft, same thing. I don't think they're good companies. Or it's substitute teaching uh, or driving a bus. I have a friend that does that. Keep something else going. Yes. Yes. Make the art your priority. In other words, anything I've done has worked around my music. Anything I've done has worked around the music. Even driver's ed, I can kind of teach the classes I want and not teach when I don't want and all that kind of stuff. Um, a little more, a little more. All right, let me put this down for a minute. So, because the music business is like this. It's like this. A good friend of mine, James Cloy Jr., and I want to bring him up, he, in my estimation, is as far as blues, uh, blues rock, R&B bass players, he is the best I've ever worked with. His time and his feel 
is unmatched. Unmatched. And you know, if I offend anybody when I say that, I said that once about a guitar player. I had a guy on the phone with me every night for two weeks crying. What about me? I play guitar. I play guitar. Yes, me. This guy needs a, you know, uh, and you know, <laughs> he used to, he used to call me. Hey, he's a big Joe Rogan fan. Hey, Joe Rogan is a gorilla with better thumbs. I'm sorry. He, that's what he is. He believes what anybody else, the guy who's sitting across, whatever that guy says, or a girl, that's what he believes. Uh, you know, you know, he didn't believe transgender existed. You know, the kind of emotions this guy would pour out five nights a week. You gotta, you know, I don't know. I don't want to get into that. Anyway, let's put that aside. Um, James Cloyd became a very good friend of mine, maybe one of my closest and dearest friends. He passed away a few years ago. He had said to me back in the 90s, always keep something going apart from music. And he drove actually a tractor trailer. And sometimes I'd call him up. He says, oh, I'm not available right now. I'm driving down to Texas for a load. And he, he didn't have his own truck, but he would use uh, a friend's truck and do that guy's load for him. They'd share the money a little bit, whatever he did. But he did that besides the music. And, and James had played with B.B. King, Albert King, Albert Collins. He played with so many. Here's a clip of him right now. Listen to his time and his feel. comedic timing you can see is also in the music business in this area unmatched unmatched still to this day unmatched and this is my life lesson to you because I have met musicians who you know and, they, and they've said these words to me these exact words well I give an emotional support to my significant other that is greater than any monetary uh, compensation I can give. Bullshit. That's bullshit. At some point, you're going to be 50, 55, 56, 57 years old. Who cares about the emotional support? Pay the mortgage. You don't want your significant other to do three jobs. Well, you know, Lord Jesus told me to play the bass and I can't do anything. Help. Help. Do you have a job? No. You got money? No. Do you have a woman? No. Do you have any prospects? No. You got anything on the horizon? Uh. No. Do you have any action at all? No. Do you have any conceivable reason for even getting up in the morning? I like to get the daily news. George, it's time for us to grow up and be men, <laughs> not little boys. Help. That's part of it. That's part of it. You want to you wanna do what you need to do for your family and for your loved ones. But more than that, you want to have your own pile of stuff. Right? You want to have your own pile of stuff. Like after the pandemic, I had a downside. This, this is, I had to move into this one-bedroom apartment that I don't like all that much, but I'm about to move out of it again, but uh, it belongs to me. 
I pay the bills. I make it happen. I do it. I'm not reliant on anybody. Just me. Just me. And really, it, it, it puts me at a point of strength for myself and confidence. But you can't, you just can't get that. You know, if you're living off of somebody else. I know folks, I know musicians who's, who's in a house of a significant other whose name is not on the deed. They're musicians, but their name is not on the deed. Now, from a logistical standpoint, that's dangerous. If the significant other decides they don't want the relationship anymore, the musician is out. When I was engaged, I brought my marbles to the table. I didn't, I, at the time when we got engaged, it had changed. Uh, she ended up getting laid off or whatever. It's actually a longer story than that I want to go into. But uh, I brought whatever I had in my marbles. She brought her marbles. We took our marbles, put them together, and bought the house. Now, she put a bigger down payment than me, yes. But my name was on that deed, and when we split up, we had, a, we had to split the house, and I got a nice chunk of change out of that. So this is what I'm saying. It is smart. It is a life lesson. Have something going other than music. Even when I did cruise ships and I got paid a lot of money, folks, when I did cruise ships, I worked on my days off for the artists, for the auctioneers. I worked for those guys for 10 bucks an hour. And then when my daughter called me up and she would say, Dad, I had to spend money on books for college or whatever, and I figured she was out partying or whatever, whatever. I don't have money for rent. I could cut a check. I could cut a check. No questions asked. Boom. Because that's what I wanted to do for my family. Because I wanted to get up in the morning on the cruise ship, look in the mirror, and know that I not only was sustaining myself, but I was keeping enough to help those that I love. And that's what James Floyd taught me. And that's what I'm teaching you. So here's a short one today. Um, it, might, it might be earlier than Friday. I started working on that uh, Mr. Lincoln Palmer song today and I'm liking it. I might even put it up on Sunday. We'll see. Um, I'm going to close. In my life, I've had, I've had a really good career. You know, I don't, I don't know. I want it again. I want to play with some of those kind of guys again. But I'm going to leave you with a clip of uh, me with Mark Farner at the Fillmore in Detroit. The other drummer you see in the picture is Danny Seraphine from the band Chicago. And we played I'm Your Captain together. And, and it, it's just a moment in my life which sometimes when the career isn't where it should be, sustains me. But the point is that even when I did that, and even when I was touring with Wagner and I was working with Mark Farner, I kept hours with Office Max and Guitar Center and taught 30 kids. So now I teach about 25 kids at Guitar Center, uh, play around town, obviously the channel, which really doesn't pay any money yet. Um, and then Uber, or hopefully soon, I'll be teaching driver's ed. Why? Why? Again. Because winter's coming, because maybe there's going to be a couple of months where gigs don't come, because maybe, maybe who knows? Who knows? We have another financial collapse and the clubs don't hire, whatever. We don't know. We just don't know. But no matter what. I have my fingers in a few pies just in case. Just in case. Because I can just play in my bedroom for you and I'm still a musician. Because I am not dependent upon anyone. And there's a freedom in that that you just can't get. If you are beholden to someone else who's paying most of the bills, there is a pride, there is a joy, 
and knowing I've dug my own ditch and I'll plant in that ditch whatever I see fit. So, moral to the story. God bless your music career. I hope Bruce Springsteen calls you whatever, whoever your guy is or girl is. I hope it happens for you. But if it doesn't, if the clubs stop hiring, if AI takes over and Every, everybody, nobody buys human music anymore. You'll be okay. And you'll say, oh, Glenn was right. I started driving a school bus and six months there was no work. Anyway, that's today's first edition of uh, the Drum Mission Life Lesson. Don't be a freeloader. Maybe that's what I'll call it. I haven't decided yet. And there'll be another new feature I'm going to put up probably once a month, and it's going to be a, a, a drummer's perspective of, of some record reviews. I think we're going to start with the Beatles and just go right through the Beatles music, and I'll just review each track based on not only the track, but what Ringo's doing and Ringo's performance. I think that'll be interesting. As well as, again, probably earlier than Friday, maybe, because I'm kind of excited about it, because I'm getting better at it again. Uh, I'll probably have a day or two of rehearsal and then I'll do like one or two takes and you'll see what I do. Again, it probably won't be perfect. A lot of stuff is going on in Mr. Lincoln Palmer. But anyway, anyway guys, I'm going to leave you with uh, me, Mark Farner, and Danny Serafine, and a whole host of other people playing I'm Your Captain, the tail end of the show it happened a few years ago i think 2016 or 17 so not that long ago and it was a highlight of my life and you too can have those kind of highlights those kind of highlights and there's no shame in working that other gig and don't let them don't let them peer pressure you into thinking there is anyway have a great week I'll see you on the next one. Don't know when it's going to be, but it will be a drum cover no matter what. See you soon. Love all of you.
Thank you, God bless y'all. God bless all them Dick Wagner fans. Make some Detroit noise for the Motor City's own Mark Farner. For Jimmy Bones and Ray Goodman.